this might simply be the best thing to combine with sugar or combine with a high carb meal. And no, it's not fiber, no, it's not fat, and it's not even protein, although protein is definitely one of the kings when it comes down to combining with carbs. But what am I talking about? I'm talking about allulose. There is some very intriguing research when it comes down to this. So let's go ahead and break it down. Let's start off with a new study that came out in 2021. Okay, it was published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care Journal. Really interesting stuff because they took a look specifically at combining allulose along with sugar. So they took 30 subjects, which isn't a huge study, but pretty big, and the design of the study was great. It was a randomized crossover design, which I'll explain in a minute, but it's a very good design. So they had subjects consume 50 grams of sucrose. Sucrose is regular table sugar, so 50 grams of sucrose. And then they had them either uh, consume a placebo along with it, or escalating dosages of allulose. Two and a half grams, five grams, seven and a half grams, or 10 grams. Of course, nobody knew what they were getting. The placebo didn't know what they were getting, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, they did this and they took measurements uh, before in terms of their glucose and insulin, and then at 30 minute increments. So they did it at 30, 60, 90, and 120 minute increments, they measured their insulin and their glucose. At the end of this, they had what is called a seven to 14 day washout period, where they let everything clear their system, and then the groups crossed over. The group that had the placebo now had the allulose, and the group that had the allulose now had the placebo. Of course, they didn't know this. So what did they find with this study? It is insane they found that the allulose group had a dose-dependent effect on their blood sugar at 30 minutes postprandial. So at 30 minutes, dose-dependent, meaning the more allulose they had, the more of a positive effect it had on their blood glucose. Whoa, what's going on here? It didn't seem to occur beyond 30 minutes, though. It just didn't seem to have an impact beyond 30 minutes, which is implying that maybe allulose has a short-term effect, like in the short term, to combine with the meal to lessen that initial spike. Very interesting stuff. Now they found that this was particularly the case with the seven and a half gram dose and the 10 and a half gram dose. So the more allulose, the more the response. And they found the same thing with insulin. Okay, they found that 30 minutes afterwards, insulin was quite a bit lower in the higher dosage allulose groups. But they did find that later on throughout the day, glucose excursion was lower. That means less sort of big rises and falls. So it seems to mellow that out, which is very interesting. So now we have to ask the question, like what is the proposed mechanism here? Why is it doing this? Because right now I'm seeing something that is like earth shattering. We could combine allulose with higher carb foods and maybe lessen the impact of those high carb foods. Well, the journal Nature Communication had published that the researchers really attribute the anti-glycemic effects of allulose to an increase in what's called glucagon-like peptide one. Now that would require a more biochemy conversation, a more nuancy discussion, but essentially glucagon-like peptide or GLP-1 is going to increase the sensitivity of a cell to insulin, mainly an adipocyte, mainly a fat cell. But essentially, so by improving the insulin sensitivity, it could be suggesting that the glucose is getting utilized better, therefore bringing the glucose levels down. So there are some other mechanisms though. We have to look at some other research. But the way that I look at this is again, combining allulose with a higher carb meal might mitigate some of the potential damage there. But what if you're already doing low carb? What if you're not having high carb meals? Could allulose come into play there? I think so too. I think especially if we're leaning on the Nature Communications Journal that is suggesting that it helps uh, with glucagon-like peptide one, because that could make it so that the already good benefits of a lower carb protocol might even be enhanced by utilizing allulose as your preferred sweetener. It's kind of cool. I put a link down below. There's a company that you can check out through Thrive Market uh, that is called Good Sam. They are a regenerative farming company. So they have macadamia nuts, but they have chocolate that is sweetened with allulose. And it is dang good. They have chocolate bars. They have these chocolate covered cashews, these chocolate covered almonds, these chocolate covered peanuts using 100% allulose as the sweetener. So there's no fillers, no enhancers, anything like that. It's just straight up allulose. But they also have uh, pancakes. They have some cake 
cake. They have all kinds of things sweetened with allulose. So you can start experimenting with that yourself. And if you're doing low carb, probably the only place you're gonna find like an allulose sweetened chocolate covered peanut, right? So you're talking one gram of net carb in a lot of their chocolate. Super cool stuff and you're getting to get these potential benefits that I'm talking about with allulose. So whether you're doing low carb and you just want a sweet chocolate or you're not doing low carb and you wanna have a chocolate that goes along with your meal or goes along with whatever you're eating, maybe without as much guilt, definitely recommend you check them out. So the link down below is for Thrive Market. So you can order your groceries through Thrive Market. So check them out down below in the description. Okay, now we get into the really granular stuff, no pun intended. Okay, this is super cool because one side of the crowd says, hey, this is why glucose is modulated during you know, consumption of allulose or after consumption of allulose. But then there's a whole different world that looks at transporters in in vitro studies, meaning in Petri dishes, very illuminating stuff. So there's a study that was published in the journal Pharmacology and Therapeutics. It took a look at allulose, but again, in this case, it was in cultured intestinal cells, okay, so in a Petri dish. So we take it for what it's worth, but what they found was that allulose competes for the same absorption transporter, the same transporter as fructose, which is GLUT5. So it actually competes for the same transporter, which may imply lower levels of glucose in the blood, but here's the issue. Fructose doesn't usually drive glucose levels up super high. Fructose doesn't usually drive insulin levels high because it's different than glucose. So if it rides the GLUT5 transporter, then how is it impacting insulin levels like we found in the BMJ study? Well, it's interesting because it doesn't just utilize GLUT5. It also utilizes GLUT2. Okay, and the efflux of fructose and allulose, basically it triggers this massive competition between glucose, fructose, and allulose, all for the GLUT2 transporter. So you've got three different things here, allulose, fructose, and glucose, all trying to get on one bus, but only one is getting on the bus. So this is possibly why in this study we saw a reduced permeation of glucose by up to 70% in these cultured cells because they're all trying to compete for this transporter. So you combine this potential mechanism along with the potential mechanism of increases of glucagon-like peptide one, we have a really interesting thing on our hands. And I think the research is just now starting to come to the surface, right? Like with this 2021 study, we're starting to see more of it. I'm always looking for ways to intertwine allulose into my diet. Like if my wife is baking something that isn't even necessarily keto, maybe she's using just gluten-free flour, she's not using almond flour, maybe she's using a gluten-free flour, we'll still sweeten it with either a combination of allulose and other things or with allulose because we speculate by at least having the allulose in there along with say rice flour or whatever gluten-free flour is being used, maybe we can attenuate some of the effect of the actual starches from the cake in the first place, even if we're not having sugar along with it. So it's a very interesting thing and something very intriguing to start toying around with. If you're wearing like a glucose monitor or something, you could actually watch your own result with it. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.